So today's video is sponsored by the Above Ed Show, which will be taking place on October 2023 in Las Vegas. This show is for professional sharpeners and will be put on by the Above Shears folks. It's uh, the interesting thing about this show is we're going to have a number of speakers, and in particular, they're going to be bringing people in from the factory that actually make the shears to speak to us, to work with us, and to give us some hands on training while we're there. So, what's special about this show is while we're going to learn how the shears are made, we're going to see how we can integrate some of those practices into our sharpening businesses. What's also great is it's going to have a lot of photo opportunities to take with the people who are actually doing the work uh, where they make the shears. And there'll also be a certificate that will be giving, given for the show that will show that there's been training done by the individuals that have come from the factory. So they'll actually, the certificate will say that you had the opportunity to work with them. So it's a great marketing uh, potential that you'd be able to use for your business. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'll drop a link down below this video. If you're interested in coming to the show, you can take a look. Hopefully it's going to be a help to you. But this video in particular shows where I'm going to go ahead and do a fix on a shear that a lot of people struggle with, and that's a no line thinner. We'll show you the proper way to sharpen it, but first I'm gonna have to fix it because it was sharpened improperly in the field. I hope this helps. All right, so I'm gonna do some work on a Sam Vila shear here. Um, this is actually one of their Invisalign shears, and it was not sharpened properly. Now, on this type of a shear, uh, instead of it acting like a, a knife and a fork where the straight blade does the cut and the teeth are holding the hair, this type of shear, it's actually more like a sharp fork, which means that the teeth are doing the cut and that's these teeth are running up against this blade. Uh, interestingly, on these, you actually have to dull the straight blade on these and then sharpen the teeth in order to be able to get them to cut properly uh, so that they remove the hair without leaving that line. Uh, so I'm gonna show how to do that. So let's go through the process. So we're gonna start off by going ahead and taking the shear part. Anytime that you have Invisalign style shears like this, this is how they're supposed to be sharpened regardless of the type of blade. There was also a washer that was up underneath the head, or the, I'm sorry, the um, tension plate of the shear. And, and this, this can um, happen. A lot of times what can happen is, is um, on that hole, that hole may have been drilled just a little bit too deep. And that's why there would be that additional washer in there. Typically, you will not see a washer underneath. That doesn't mean that the shear is bad by any means. Uh, it just means that it's just what the factory did in order to not waste an entire blank of a shear because the screw hole was drilled just a smidge too deep. Uh, so all of them do that. So we're going to go ahead and do a little work on our water stone over here. going to go ahead and bring up a new ride line on the inside of this shear. All right. Let's take a peek at what we did. Oof. All right. So a new ride line has been created, but you can actually see on the outside edges of these teeth. Oops. There we go. There's a couple of places, there you go, you can see where they've, looks like somebody in order to be able to try and correct what was done, had um, removed the inside corners of the teeth because that's why they thought that they were grabbing when in reality, this other blade should have been sharpened properly in order for the teeth to cut. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna leave this alone at this point. I'm actually gonna have to sharpen that damage off and then recreate this ride line again on this shear. So sometimes you just have to read what your water stone is telling you. In this particular case too, because I'm not sure what's been done to this blade, I'm gonna go ahead and work this blade on the water stone, bring up a new ride line, and then we'll go ahead and do the dulling process on this. 
I'm gonna stop completely before I come off of the stone. You always wanna stop completely before you come off the stone. All right. And now we have a new ride line that's been created on that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna sharpen this and dull this because there's a touch of damage on this blade as well, which I don't think was any fault of a, um, anyone who sharpened it. I think that it was basically just uh, because the teeth were not making contact properly. Uh, more than likely that caused a little bit of an issue. So we'll start this up. I'm gonna start with the straight blade. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up a burr. there. All right. All right, so we brought up a burr. I'm now going to go over to the polishing pad and I'm going to go ahead and and I'm not worried about pulling the burr off of this one right now. Um, I'm gonna flip-flop it just a little bit to make sure that my, my blade looks good, which it does. I'm just gonna go ahead and polish the front surface and I'm actually gonna do a reverse polish on the inside to go ahead and correct what was done on the inside of the here. And this is just all cosmetics that I'm doing mainly to this blade. I just want to make sure that I get it back as close to factory spec as I possibly can. Lift my magnifier up and take a look. That looks pretty good. All right, so now I'm going to shut this down and reverse the wheel in the opposite direction. And I'm actually going to dull out the inside of that blade. Now I know that that seems counterintuitive to do as a sharpener but again you need that blade to be able to work where you have that very very slight radius inside edge for that blade to be able to when it comes down and does its cut it's not going to ram into those blades so what we'll do here is we'll rotate this back around we're going to drop this back down here and then just show you what i did so let's see if we can see this um can you i don't know if you can see there we go. You can see where I actually had to dull that inside edge right up on the top of that ride line. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow those sharp teeth to pass over this blade without damaging them. All right, so let's go ahead and flip this back around. Drop this down. Turn this here. Go ahead. Draw that back. And we're going to do the sharpening on the tooth blade. So I'm going to treat this just like any other convex shear. We're going to sharpen this until we bring up a burr on the edge. I want this to be at about 50 to 55 degrees. So I'm just starting to see my burr is starting to form. And I've got a couple of teeth where the burrs aren't wanting to form up right away. So we're going to keep working these until we bring that in. Being patient is key. Oftentimes it's very tempting to drop your angle down and that is not going to help the situation for the shear for the customer. All right, so I'm going to shut this off and I'm going to go ahead and return back around to my water stone. Get this cleaned off. So I'm going to want to pull these burrs back and I'm going to want to see what is going on with that damaged portions of the teeth that I ran into earlier. So that'll go on. We're gonna start by pulling back towards myself to pull the burrs away. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the shear off just to make sure that I pull any burrs off of that edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and work a new ride line on the teeth again but I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna do a lot of work because if I still have to do more sharpening in order to be able to get past the damage, 
I'm gonna wanna go ahead and do that before I fully rework that ride line back onto the shear. So all of the teeth look good, except for the last, I wanna say three teeth or so, where you can just barely see those little shiny spots right there. There's three or four teeth, and I have to go ahead and get all the way past that before I can actually uh, make these, where they'll be all the way sharp again for those teeth, and, and it'll function properly. So I'll drop this back down, spin this around, and let's do a little bit more work. I'm working more in the throat right now than I am on the other teeth because I don't want to take any more life off of the shear than I need to in order to be able to correct the problem. I'm actually going to pull the burr back and take a look in the magnifier and see if I've gotten past the damage yet. And I have on all of the teeth except for the very last two. So again, I'm going to come in, catch those last two teeth, bring this the rest of the way in, and pull that back burr back with my thumb even. Lift this up, take a look. All right, and we've gotten past that damage, and we actually still have a full um, ride line all the way down the shear as well. So if I spin this back around, drop this down, you can actually see that I still have a full ride line all the way down the teeth, all the way up to that last tooth. So we're going to remove any additional burr with the polishes. So we'll drop this here, bring this over, and now we're going to go ahead and polish these teeth up. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to deburr the shear on the edge. This is going to pull the burrs off of that edge. I'm going to rotate back just slightly to polish back away from the edge. And now I'm going to finish with doing some convexing on the front surface of this blade. All right, so we'll pull my magnifier up. We're gonna take a look. My convexing looks good. The inside looks good. We'll flip this back around, drop this down and put these back together. So remember how the shear came apart. So we had a washer on the stud we're going to mate the proper blades together. We're going to take that an, that additional washer that was in that shear and put it in. Drop that in place. So that washer is now in place. Then we're going to put our tension plate in. And I'm having to move over where my magnifier is a little bit. My light is not great right here. And we will set that in place. Let's make sure that that's seated properly. You always want to make sure that you get the square portions of your clicker plate over the shoulder of the collar of the stud. And then we'll start our tension knob. And we'll tighten that up. All right, so we're gonna ease this close so I'm spreading it slightly as I close for the initial close. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a quick test. See how she's cutting now compared to what she was doing before. I did notice that there was a little bit of set issue with these as well, so we're gonna knock just a little bit of set into these. Pull this out, get some fur. I do not have my human fur with me today, or my human fur, my human hair with me today. So we're gonna do this on some rabbit pelt. Let me do our cut, pull away, cut, pull away, cut, pull away. And we have a nice cutting Invisalign shear that leaves a lot less line than your regular thinning shear will.
All right, so this is gonna go back to the customer at this point. And I have another shear for her to sharpen. So I'm gonna want her to test these while I'm working on her since they were done improperly before. And it's always best to get some feedback before you leave, and this is a good way to do it. So I'm gonna sharpen up another pair of shears for her, and um, hopefully these do well for her, but I think that they will. Hope this helps.